think it's very interesting. When we meet Christians, that we need to qualify them. Meaning, we need to size them up. Meaning, we need to see if they're the right kind of Christian or if we need to set them straight on their path. Before I launch a thousand stories of people who have come up to me and, and said, so you say you're a Christian, right? And I say, yeah. They go, well, what do you believe? What, what's, your what's your doctrine? What's your dogma? Before I tell that story, I would like to talk about Marsha Brady. I love Marsha Brady. I love the Brady Bunch. I still will watch the Brady Bunch. It brings back so many memories. As a kid, I would have given anything to meet Marsha Brady. Well, I did. I met Marsha Brady. It was a clothing store in uh, Sherman Oaks, California called The Factory. Hello. And, and a trendy clothing store, kind of an upscale used clothing store. And uh, there she was, going through the same circular as I was going through, looking through clothes. And there she was. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And all these things were going through my head. Oh my gosh, that's Marsha Brady. Oh my gosh, I'm going to meet Marsha Brady. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Please understand, I was um, in my 20s. I wasn't like a little kid at this point. And I was so excited. I'm like, my gosh, I'm going to meet Marsha Brady. Here it is. It's going to happen. I'm going to say something to Marsha Brady. And Marsha Brady's going to smile and say something back. Well, I knew Marsha Brady was a Christian. Okay, the actress who played Marsha Brady, you all know that, right? But let's be fair. All I could think about was Marsha Brady, all right? And, uh, and uh, I knew she was a Christian. And, uh, um, and... I was so excited. I really was. I was so excited. I was so clear that I was going to say something so thoughtful and so caring and so warm-hearted with the biggest smile on my face that I could muster. And I was going to make Marsha Brady feel all the love that I felt for her for all those years. Because even prenatally, I loved Marsha Brady. When I was just a thought in God's mind, I was thinking about Marsha Brady. And I walked right up to Marsha Brady and I said, what church do you go to? Came out. I couldn't believe it. What church do you go to? I didn't even ask the nice. I, went, I didn't go, hi, Marsha Brady. I'm so excited to meet you. I was like, what church do you go to? Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to act like I'm, I'm like intimidated by the fact that you're Marsha Brady, man. What church do you go to? I really did this. And she looked at me with that same look that I gave her and answered. And then she went back to her clothes hunting. And I went back home and hated myself every day since. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. I can count on one hand how many times in my Christian walk I remember being so horrible to another Christian. There's billions of times I've been horrible. Hey. And there's billions of times. But the ones I remember are very clear. And this is in the number two spot, and I'll never tell the story of the number one spot. <laughs> okay, unless you get me really drunk. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay. But seriously, I felt horrible. I meant no, I meant no harm. No malice toward her. Anyone who knows me knows I love the Brady Bunch. I would never be mean to a Brady. Never. Susan Olson's my friend on, on Facebook. And no matter how many stupid things she posts, I still act like I like them. But, <laughs> hi, Susan. <laughs> oh, Barry Williams, add me. Okay. Florence Henderson added me. And I certainly would never be rude to her. She's Carol Brady. Okay, but for some reason, all my Christian ick came out on poor Marsha Brady. And, I, and she reciprocated, man. The look she gave back at me, man, she was used to it. She was like, oh great, another idiot who grew up on me, who worshipped the ground, ground I walked on, who had 
had all my posters in his room, now is a believer, and walks up to me in public, and has nothing nice to say, just wants to find out if I'm for real or not a Christian. I became one of those. Well, I had to learn it somewhere. So it's your fault. <laughs> so I feel really bad. So, so uh, Marsha Brady, I'm very, very sorry. There's still time. We're like the same age, you know. <laughs> It'd be really weird if she did. It'd be really weird. It'd be like crazy weird to be like, I, 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 I come to a performance and I go, you're never going to believe this. Marsha Brady called me and someone's going to say, just so you know, Marsha Brady is fiction. No, 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 I know that, but she called me. And did she say, hi, this is Marsha Brady? Because <laughs> it probably wasn't her. Okay, anyone who can convince me they're Marsha Brady can call me. There we go. My phone number is... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> five five five. <laughs> Seriously though, I was horrible, and I still feel horrible. And it was a lifetime ago. Well, I find it interesting that the only people Jesus qualifies in his ministry are either really arrogant religious leaders, so if Jesus were standing there, he would have nailed me on my behavior, or people of other faiths other than Judaism to make sure that they understood what they were receiving from him. But he never qualified a sinner to let them know they were a sinner. He never made people feel bad. He, you know what I mean? He never guilted the people he healed and delivered. And I'm reminded of a very often overlooked passage of scripture that coming from me, please really recognize what I'm saying is incredibly radical in the Bible. <laughs> so if I were going to start a religious cult, I'd start it on this one. So, <laughs> excuse me, I was swallowing my pride. Um, a centurion sent his people to Jesus to tell him that his slave was sick and dying. And would Jesus heal the slave? And we all know how the story goes, but if you don't, I'll tell you, Jesus heals. <laughs> so Jesus heals the slave. And depending on which version you read, it's slave or servant, but they're in exactly the same role historically. And then we move on and then Jesus just does something else and teaches something else and performs another miracle and goes on and he's fabulous. Well, I'm not going on. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab my, my magnifying lens and I'm going to point it to the scripture and I'm going to break down parts of it for you. Because I want to really make a point. The centurions had slaves. They had people who did not want to serve them, to serve them. Sometimes they politely called them servants. But servants get paid. These people did not get paid. They lived worse than the animals the centurions owned. They lived in their own squabble quarters. They, they